Welcome back to the Express at Hatzik Elementary School in Mission. Now earlier we learned how this school won a national award for being one of the healthiest and active schools in the country. And later we'll learn a little more about that with a unique program they have called Bike Club. But right now it's time for some spacey science at the H.R. McMillan Space Center. You might ask yourself, why am I looking at a picture of a monkey riding a rocket? Well, I'll tell you because uh, 2011 is the 50th anniversary of the very first person in space. Now, that was, of course, Yuri Gagarin, uh, and he was a Russian, the very first human to go into orbit around the Earth. But I don't want to forget about those little creatures that actually paved the way for people up in, in space. Now, the, the very first things that were alive that went into space were fruit flies. Yes, those annoying things that you find in your kitchen in the summertime, uh, they actually got into space before anybody else. And then there was a series of, uh, there were some, some dogs that went up into space, uh, dogs that went into orbit, uh, and then a series of monkeys. And I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of monkeys because uh, I just really find them quite entertaining. Uh, the first one, the one that's on the screen there, his name is Baker, and he's a squirrel monkey. And he went into space in the very early 60s. And you might think, oh, it was horrible for these animals. In fact, a lot of these animals survived. They went into space and they did come back again. I was very surprised when we started doing research into it that uh, a lot of the animals uh, survived. They came back and they were fine. In fact, uh, this monkey, Baker, lived until November 1984 in Huntsville, Alabama. That's right, this monkey went into space, came back, and then lived another 25 years or so uh, down here on Earth. Of course, not being able to be released into the wild because the other monkeys would think he was crazy because he would tell everybody that he'd been in, in space. Uh, so again, happy story. Why were we sending these animals into space? Well, we needed to see what space would do to people. We didn't know what weightlessness would do. We didn't know if people would be able to operate, if they'd be paralyzed, if there was some other factor um, happening out in space. The next one, Ham the Chimp. Yes, so if you're a chimp and they've called you Ham the Chimp, your life is pretty much written for you. But Ham the Chimp went up into space, and uh, this is in fact him uh, at, after splashdown. Of course, they went and got the capsule, it landed in the ocean, the Navy went and picked him up, and, and of course you can see him uh, shaking hands uh, with, the, with the captor. Uh, then we have Yuri uh, Gagarin. Now, Yuri went into space in 1961 on April the 12th, and that kind of started off the whole space race, and that's the reason we have a lot of things in space right now is the war between uh, America and Russia uh, really did drive forward space technology. And that's one of the reasons why we have uh, so much uh, technology born in the 60s and 70s. Uh, things like the space shuttle, things like uh, uh, space stations up in space. And now we're kind of getting to a different stage where there's other countries that are involved and it's not as necessarily a, a, as a military operation, but more as a research station. So uh, for me, I think it's a better place for us to be. Um, but we can't really forget just those little animals that went ahead of the people and pave the way for a safe journey for us into space as well and possibly for for more of us to go into space space travel will get easier and hopefully uh we'll be able to say hey thank you baker you squirrel monkey for paving the road for safe space travel for the express i am cam cronin with my feet firmly planted on the ground here at the hr mcmillan space center but uh, hey let's not forget about our furry friends Space may be closer than you think, and so may be your dream dress. Up next on the Express, we're wedding dress shopping at Blush Occasions, where famous designers strut their stuff, and so do the wedding bells. Carrots Wedding Bells is brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the Wedding Bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. Historically, the white wedding gown symbolized wealth. And when Queen Victoria wore one in 1840, it pretty much sealed the deal. And nobody's looked back since. So Sarah and I headed to Blush Bridal to continue our quest for her perfect gown. Here at Blush, we can usually get you in the dress within the first three tries. What? Three dresses? Amazing. I want to sleep on it. I feel buyer's remorse like buying a t-shirt at the Gap. We want you to go home, go home, sleep on it, because we don't want you to make a decision until you can walk out of the store so excited that that's the dress. Yeah. So if that takes two, three, or six appointments, that's fine. But if you're not even getting married, can you just come in and have that done? We typically only book appointments for brides that are getting oh, married, okay. so it's by appointment only here at the salon. I'm having a very kind of informal garden party, whimsical wedding. Okay. So that's the key word. 
I'm gonna try this one. Okay. And um, this one, this one. Okay. And I love pockets. Pockets on a wedding dress? It's like the big thing Aubrey get with it. And who should I bring to my appointment with me? It's great to bring a really trusted friend with you to the first appointment. Bring mom along with you, and then when you're down to your favorites and you're ready to make your decision, then it's fun to bring a group of people with you so that you can kind of celebrate. Dun, 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 dun. And it was showtime. I think every dress is so nice, but I'm waiting for it to hit me that I'm a bride. It's a little too edgy for her. Sarah's more of an old soul. So be beautiful, but just not, it's not me. Next. <gasps> I love this one. See? See? Different. <gasps> I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> is she crying? Can you see yourself going down the aisle on this? I love it. This dress, it's got like the whimsical feel, the polka dots, like the vintage feel. <laughs> Definitely gotta get mom back. So Ashley was right. Usually it's one of the first three you try on. This is dress number two. I'm getting married. <laughs> These women are good. It was pretty much a done deal, but we kept going. Next dress. So something totally I different. I like this one. Every dress looks beautiful, but you have to refer back to what kind of occasion it is. This is where it gets confusing. They're all so beautiful. Like I said, you're gonna have to get married a few times. <laughs> it's not like you want the poof, the, the big thing. I honestly can't stop thinking about that one. I didn't think that was gonna happen today. And then I got into the action. <laughs> I love it. You look beautiful. All I need is the groom. We're in sister dresses. Although the girls couldn't find me a groom, they kept their word and found Sarah a match after only three dresses. Do I look like a bride? We're done. We're done. I know. We're done. done. We're done. For Shaw TV, where are the wedding bells? Carrots Wedding Bells has been brought to you by Carrots, online at carrots.com. Apparently, Vera Wang and Melissa Sweet, all at blush occasions, are the most popular gowns for celebrity brides. You're watching The Express, and coming up, we're going to find out what's popular for local kids. After the break, a Vancouver Island road trip to Tiger Lily Farms. It's an amazing experience for kids. For some kids, this is the first time they've ever touched a live farm animal. The Bike Club at Hatsik Elementary in Mission. We learn the safety on the road and also what you're considering out on the trails when you're riding with a mountain bike. The Express. This is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio, loungehairstudio.com. Lungo filaccio, triste sartaccio, fila, fila, ma che vuoi fila, senza punta la non può andare. Troppo filo te l'ha fatto far, ed ora non puoi più filare. Hai filato giorno e notte con giacchette e pantaloni, sotto vesti e gonelloni pure a sé. Welcome back to the Express at Hatzik Elementary in Mission. I think this is one of the sportiest schools around. You even have your own bike club. How cool is that? Yeah, it's great. We love the bike club. It's The kids really enjoy it. So how often do you meet? Where do you go? Um, every Tuesday afternoon. We start in January and we finish in June. And you have a, an honorary dog that goes along with you? Yeah, Chelsea <laughs> loves riding. She's, she, it's, she lives for Tuesdays. That's so cool. What do you think the extra benefits are for the kids then having a club specific like this? Well, they get the experience of coming out with us, so now they know where the trails are. A lot of the parents can't get out there with them. They don't even know where the trails are, so now the kids know where to go, and they get experience of riding. We ride on the road a little bit, so we, we learn the safety on the road, and also what you're considering out on the trails when you're riding with a mountain bike. Very cool. And one of the neatest things is that um, it started here and it's spreading. That's right. We had a teacher here last year that um, was here for just one year, and he joined the bike club, and he went to another school and started a bike club there. Cool. 
Do you think you're the sportiest school around? Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's sports day every day. <laughs>The bike club has been happening for 12 years here at Hatzik Elementary School in Mission. And just recently, two of the bike club kids, Nicholas and Morgan, entered a mountain bike race in Salmon Arm. And Mr. Roberts says they did very well, so congratulations to them. Now on the Express, we're trading in our mountain bikes for a little ferry road trip to Vancouver Island's Tiger Lily Farm. Quality Assured Collision Road Trip is brought to you by Quality Assured Collision Services and our network of 18 auto body shops across B.C. For today's road trip, we're heading to the farm. Tiger Lily Farm in Arrington, to be exact. Located on Arrington Road, just west of Parksville, Tiger Lily is a family farm owned and operated. It's charming from the get-go. An old dog named Wally snoozes away the day on the front porch, and there's flowers growing out of boots. Things like this are scattered everywhere. How you doing, Wally? You're a nice old dog. I love children, I love people, and I love animals. And for me, this is the ideal life. Cecil and his wife bought the property more than 26 years ago after looking all over Vancouver Island for just the right location. They started by raising Shetland and Arabian Cross ponies for business and opened the farm to the public when people started dropping by for pony rides. Today, it's a working farm with trail rides and hands-on experiences for children. The biggest thing is, because of the way society is, Children don't see animals up close. They see them on TV, they see them in books. Um, for me to be able to watch a child milk a goat or a bottle feed a baby or just hug a lamb, you know, uh, that is what is really great about it. It's an amazing experience for kids. For some kids, this is the first time they've ever touched a live farm animal. You know, they may see a dog or a cat, uh, but as far as touching a cow and getting that connection that of, of milk, you know, that your milk doesn't just come from the shelf on the store, it comes from an animal and there's a process before it gets to your table. Um, and eggs, the kids love to collect the eggs. and. You know, it's such a simple thing. It's something that I would take for granted when I need an egg in the morning and just go and get it out of the nest, you know. But for the rest of us, we have to go to the store and buy the eggs. So the process of how it all works and, you know, they learn, but they, it's a lot of confidence as well. And um, they have to be brave. It can be very terrifying to meet a new animal. There's no denying that many of these animals are pretty cute. Some are a bit stinkier than others, yes. And for some reason, we naturally form some type of friendship with them. But this is a working farm, and that means that many of these little guys are going to end up on our table for dinner. These pigs are two months from market. It's, it's awkward to talk about uh, petting a baby animal and then talking about buying a ham to take home for dinner. But it's it's a fact and it's an important piece that sometimes we like to brush under the carpet and not think too much about but it's um you know that's that's reality and that's how it is tiger lily farm is open from mid-march until the end of october and for a week at christmas time for some seasonal fun for full details on all of the services here including trail rides farm fresh produce and meat you can visit their website at tigerlilyfarm.ca for quality assured collision road trip in errington I'm Kate Bergen. Well, howdy, partners. Yee-haw! Quality Assured Collision Road Trip has been brought to you by Quality Assured Collision Services and our network of 18 auto body shops across B.C. Tiger Lily Farm, great place to visit on Vancouver Island. And for some more ideas on how to make the most of the local scene, we have today's Express Spotlight. Join the celebration of family at the third annual Philippine Independence Day. The day will include music, dances, exhibits, and family-friendly activities. A mind-blowing Afro-Cuban music experience comes to Vancouver for the very first time. The Pedrito Martinez group comes from New York City and will be led by world-class percussionist Pedro Pablo Martinez. This seventh annual event has become a signature in Western Canada's fashion industry. 20 models work with professionals in six weeks of photo shoots, workshops, and a glamour finale show. And that's it for today's Express from Hatzik Elementary School in Mission, which, by the way, celebrated its 100th anniversary this year. We're going to leave you with something a little unusual from Stanley Park. It's Circus West's journey to Lost Lagoon, and we'll see you next time.